Beginning Blackboard Training, Lesson 5, Part 1, Organizing the Assignments Area. In this lesson, you will learn how to set up the assignments area of your course with weekly folders, how to post lecture notes and presentations, and how to create an assignment so students can submit their work on Blackboard. Best practices for course design have all course materials, assignments, lecture notes, presentations, test, quizzes, and worksheets organized into subfolders by week, unit, or module in the assignments area on Blackboard. Virtually all MBU courses will use weekly folders organized according to the weeks during which the course will run. There should be one folder for each week of the course, and all materials for a given week should be located within that week's folder. Here is an example of what weekly folders within a course shell look like. There are a few things to note about the organization of these folders. First, notice how the folders are uniformly organized with the same format and structure. This creates an aesthetically pleasing look to your course. Next, observe that each folder's name indicates the week and the dates during which that week will be in session. Next, see that each weekly folder contains an outline of that week's material, so at a glance the students can see exactly what will be expected of them. They will then go into the folder where they will find all of their assignments, all of your materials, lectures, presentations, and so forth. Now let's take a look at the assignments area. Click on the assignments button in the course menu. This will take you into your course's assignments area. You will notice at the top there are four buttons which the build content menu is the one that you will use to create the vast majority of your course content. On it you can create items which will allow you to post lecture notes and presentations, files, audio, images, videos, or even links to external websites with the URL feature. This menu also allows you to build content folders, which is how you will organize your course into weekly folders. This menu also provides you with tools to add mashups to your course, including Flickr photos, slideshow presentations, YouTube videos, and more. The Create Assessment menu allows you to add tests, surveys, assignments, self and peer assessments, and safe assignments to your course. The Add Interactive Tool menu gives you the ability to create links to discussion boards, journals, wikis, groups, chats, virtual classrooms, Echo 360 content, or Cafe Scribe content. Finally, the Assigned Textbook menu gives you the ability to post information about your course's textbook right on Blackboard in your course shell. This can be done by searching for the book or by entering its information manually. Now, let's build a weekly folder. To do this, go to the Build Content menu and click on Content Folder. This is in the second column. Next, give your folder a descriptive name. This should include the week that you're in, for example, week one, and the dates during which that week will run. Conventionally, this will be the date of the Monday of the week and run through the Sunday following it. In this case, for example, January 9th, 2012 through January 15th, 2012. Next, go down to the text area. Here is where you will type a description of the week's activities, a broad summary, followed by a detailed outline of all of the expectations you have for your students within that week. Use a narrative and paragraph form to describe the week's materials in general to give an overview of the topics that will be covered. Then outline the assignments and tasks that will be required of the students using a bulleted list. This makes it easy for the students to see at a quick glance what they will be expected to complete during this week.
Finally, you can make things more visually appealing through the judicious use of bold formatting and colored text. So let's take this list header, make it bold, and change the color from black to red. This will draw visual attention to what's being presented here. Once you've completed the outline for the week, scroll down to the Options section. Here, you can set dates to make your folder become available at the beginning of the week and to display until the end of the week or to keep it open through the remainder of the semester. For this example, we'll make the folder available at midnight on Monday the 9th, but we won't make it go away. Click Submit when you've set your options. You've now created a weekly folder. Now, we need to build course content for the week into it, so click on the link for the week folder. Now you're ready to build your course content. We'll start with creating an assignment. Move your mouse over the Create Assessment menu, then click on Assignment. Building an assignment is not much different than creating an item like we did to post the syllabus. You must give your assignment a name. This should be something descriptive because this is what students will see when they view their grades for the assignment. We'll call this Chapter 1 Summary. You also have the option of choosing a different color for the text to appear in. To demonstrate that, let's pick a color here in the middle and apply. This will show up when we're done. Now, in the text box, type the instructions you want your students to see. In this area, you need to explain all of the details and requirements of your assignment. Remember, the more specific you are here, the easier it will be for your students to understand and complete your assignment, and the less hassle you will have with students who submit improperly or don't complete the assignment according to your specifications. It's also not a bad idea to be explicit about what sort of document formats you will accept for your assignments. Common formats are rich text format, word format, or open document format. All students should be able to submit work in one of these formats as all commonly used word processors are capable of saving files in these formats. These formats are also editable by you, the instructor, so you can add annotations and comments when you grade. You'll have the ability to return an annotated, commented, and marked up document with the assignment when you post the grade. Now, scroll down. You have the option here, under Section 2, of attaching files to your assignment. We won't worry about this here. Give your assignment a point value. This is the maximum number of points it's worth. If you want to give extra credit, you can always give a higher value. Now, set the availability. We usually make assignments available at 12 a.m. on Monday of the week they're scheduled in and leave them available until 11.59 p.m. on the following Sunday. For your convenience, this is marked as end of the day. Lastly, use the new Blackboard 9.1 feature of due dates to specify a due date for the assignment. In our case, it will be January 15th. We can also specify a time when the assignment will be due. In our case, the end of the day, 11.59 p.m. Finally, click the Submit button. That's all it takes to create an assignment in Blackboard. Now we'll move over and take a look at the Grade Center. Scroll down and click on the button next to Grade Center in the Control Panel. When we created the assignment, a column was automatically added to the Grade Center to record student grades. 
By default, adding columns go at the end of the Grade Center spreadsheet. There's our Chapter 1 summary assignment. Now let's see the student's point of view. When a student accesses the course, they see the link for your assignment. Clicking on it brings up a page where the student is able to type in a written response to the assignment or attach a document. In this case, we'll attach a document. We scroll down to the Attach File button, click the Browse My Computer button, and choose the file we wish to upload. Below this, the student has the ability to post comments. This can be a simple note or an explanation of the assignment or something that the student feels that he or she needs to communicate about their submission. You can remind your students that it is not necessary to both type a response and attach a document. Once this is done, click Submit, and the student has submitted the assignment for grading. Notice the student can see his or her own comments and the instructor feedback area. This assignment needs grading. Back on the instructor's side, our Grade Center view has changed. Notice here that there is now a Needs Grading icon in the column. Clicking on its drop-down allows us to view the student's attempt. Here we see the document that the student attached and the comments the student posted. Clicking on the link for the document allows us to open it with Word. The document will download from Blackboard and Word will automatically launch. Now we have the ability to print, read, and grade the student's assignment. Microsoft Word also has reviewing tools, so we can post a comment right within the student's document. In this case, we observe that the sample document is written entirely in Latin. Probably would be better if it were written in English, so let's let the student know that. So, Larry, I would prefer it if you wrote your assignments in English. Saving the document to a new file name will allow us to upload this graded document back to the student. Having saved the document under a new name, we can go back over to Blackboard with the Grade Center. Here we can enter a numeric grade for the assignment. We can provide feedback to the user. In this case, the feedback will address the student by name, a best practice, and direct him to see the comments that we've embedded within the document. We can now click on the Browse My Computer button and attach our graded copy of the student's work. Now that's all we need to do. We scroll down and we can click Save and Next to view the next student's assignment or Save and Exit to go back to the spreadsheet. Once an assignment has been graded, the student can click on View Grades and see this. Notice the student sees the score that we entered and it's a hyperlink. By clicking on it, the student sees our feedback and can access the graded document that we uploaded. It opens in Word just like the student's paper did for us. And here the student sees our comment. It really is just that simple. In part two of this lesson, we'll cover posting lecture notes and presentations.